Welcome everybody as we gather on this, the third weekend of Epiphany and today's worship theme, Going and Coming. Our worship today is all about discipleship, going with Jesus, coming with Him where He takes us. We'll begin today's service with the prelude. We sing together, you have come down to the lake shore. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen now to the special music, a song that again speaks of the calling of disciples. Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, Time is fulfilled, the rain is at hand, repent and Place to lay our heads 
if we follow you, who knows what we will wear, or how we shall get fed. Yet I promise you that every servant in the reign of God will shine to all the world your life will ever be. God's living rainbow sign, leave your nets along the sea. Leave your boat tied at the key. Leave your life and follow me. And I will give life to you once more. Leave your hopes and dreams and plans. Put your future in my hands. Blessed are you who understand the gift that I offer you. To follow me, whatever road that God may choose to lead us down. To wear the servant's mantle as a The first reading comes from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a, a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of God, or the people of Nineveh, believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 62. And experience this psalm now. These times are getting the best of me. My mind, my soul, my tired body, my whole being is off. I keep looking for something familiar, something foundational, something solid that makes me feel secure. I think of you and search for a sermon verse or song, anything that used to soothe my troubles, feed my soul, enliven my spirit, keep me going. I want a message from a resistant prophet. I want an invitation to leave work and come see miracles. I want to know you love and protect me. I long to feel safe. Just come up strong around me. Hold me. You know, I used to think of you differently. I was so sure, so certain I had it all figured out. But then I experienced loss and emptiness and inhumanity and insanity, and realized I had to grow up. I left all that I knew to know you, the you beyond the metaphors, the eternal, true God. 
You are more than I expected. Nothing and no one on earth is like you. There isn't anything that measures up to your love. It never loses and it never leaves. You are the living will. You are the enduring love. You are the speaking word. You are the stabilizing matter, the ground of all being. Reassure us in our time of need, God. Surround us and secure us in your love. There isn't anything that measures up to your love. It never loses and it never leaves. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news that he came to save us. And set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the Try your name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you 
fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther, and he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You know, if you're anything like me, and I think you are a lot like me, you like a great story. And the Bible has some wonderful stories, but i got to tell you, the best story in the whole Bible we got to hear here today, the story of Jonah. And the story of Jonah is really meant to make you laugh. It's a funny story. I know a lot of times in church we don't laugh much. That's too bad. We are really, we need to laugh, and the story of Jonah is really quite funny. Now, the story, Jonah was a prophet. That is, he was, or he was called to be a prophet by God. He was to speak on God's behalf. And God said he had a job for him. And, and God said, Jonah, I want you to go over here. I want you to go way over here. So you know what Jonah did? He went way over here. He got on a boat and went in the opposite direction that God told him to go because Jonah thought if he went in the opposite direction, he'd get away from God. That didn't work. That didn't work at all. So on, while he was on the boat, and it's really funny, you ought to read the story. While he's on the boat, all the people who are on the boat are really mad with him because there is this giant wind that is blowing. And they they think that Jonah is responsible for that big wind. They think God is mad at Jonah. So you know what they do with Jonah? It's a good part of the story. I like this. They take him and they throw him into the sea. Yeah. And then, after he's in the sea, some huge fish... The Bible doesn't say a whale, but if you want to call it a whale, that's all right. Some big fish comes, and I like this part, and swallows Jonah right into the belly. He swallows Jonah. Now, Jonah's not liking this one bit. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in the middle of a big fish, but I'm sure it doesn't smell so nice in there. And Jonah is really uh, upset. And while he's in the belly of the fish, he sings a a song saying, Hurrah for God. Jonah had obviously changed his mind. I guess sometimes if you spend a little time in a big fish, you you might change your mind. And so then you know what happened after that. The big fish, you know what he did? He vomited Jonah up on the beach. Yeah, it wasn't very pretty, but that's what the story (laughs) says. And, And it kind of made you laugh to see Jonah end up on the beach. And Jonah says, you know, I guess it's time for me to do what God wants me to do. So Jonah goes to Nineveh, the city where God wanted him to go. And Jonah, unlike me, preached a very short sermon. (laughs) And it was about six words. And he says, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And he then went back home. And you know what happened? All the people. All the people. And in part of of, uh, Jonah, we're told, not only did all the people, but even the animals repented. Even the cows repented. The cows and all the people repented. And we are told in Jonah, not only did they repent, all the cows and the horses and the zebras, they all put on some sackcloth, sackcloth, which is a sign that they were mourning, that they felt sorry for their sin. All of the town repented. Well, you would think Jonah was very happy about that, right? You'd think he would be, but Jonah wasn't happy at all. And you know what Jonah did? Jonah put himself under a tree. He sat down and he cried. 
He pouted. I, I, you probably never pouted in your life, but Jonah <laughs> pouted. He said, I knew I shouldn't have gone to Nineveh because I knew all along that God was going to be nice to the Ninevites, and I didn't really want that to happen. And a real funny part of the story, I can't make this tree die, but you know, uh, this tree comes over to Jonah and protects him, and Jonah's feeling pretty good because the tree's protected him, and all of a sudden God sends the sun to make the tree wither. Jonah is really feeling sorry for himself. He says, I want to die. I want to really die. I want to really, really, really die. And God said, oh, get over yourself. If I want to be loving to the Ninevites, I can be. And you, Jonah, better figure out that that is more than okay. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts. Let my week in my children's sermon, I talked about being on the receiving end of calls, how we are sometimes available to respond immediately to the caller, and sometimes we are busy and push hold or mute until it's convenient to talk. Or we don't answer the call because we may not recognize the number, or perhaps we do recognize the number, and we just don't want to talk to that person. Well, once again in our readings today from Jonah and in Mark's Gospel, we have a few more incoming calls, and the response to those calls to go and to come are as varied or different as the people who are receiving those calls. For Jonah today, God was once again calling him to speak a prophetic message to the people of Nineveh. Did you catch that? God was calling Jonah once again. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, Jonah, and go to Nineveh and proclaim the message I tell you to. Now, if you are at all familiar with the story of Jonah, and you all should be familiar with the story of Jonah today, after we were just told this whopper of a tale, you realize that it's a story filled with, with exaggeration and literary devices which stretch the imagination and provide us with a chuckle or two. After all, the first time God calls upon Jonah to speak words of repentance to the people of Nineveh, Jonah ultimately finds himself living in the lavish accommodations of the belly of a great big fish while he put God on hold or perhaps deleted God's call altogether. Or so he thought. Now, I can't blame Jonah. I'm not sure I would have liked the interruption of the call from God. 
especially since God was asking Jonah to deliver a message of redemption to the people of Nineveh. Nineveh, of all places, the capital city of Assyria. Jonah is being asked to deliver a message of God's redeeming love to people who have been feared enemies of Israel, to violent people. Why in the world would God want to save them? Why would God want to deliver them from their sinfulness? Why them? Why Jonah? Why call him? Why call us? Despite the risk in speaking truth to an unruly and unfaithful bunch of people, God calls Jonah anyway. Despite the fact that Jonah is quite comfortable at a distance with the boundaries and prejudices he has created, God calls Jonah anyway. And despite the fact that Jonah's love of hatred and misguided assurance that God's relentless love was meant only for his people, for his chosen people, God calls Jonah anyway. Not Nineveh, not Jonah, and not us are beyond the scope of God's love and grace and mercy. But hear me out. Violence and lawlessness and vitriol hatred which destroys human life does not escape consequences, nor should it. However, our own ability or perceived inability to answer God's call in our own lives is not about us. It's not about whom we have decided is in our club or not. It's not about including or excluding whom we think is in God's club either. It's not about having an exclusive claim on God's love, period. You know, one of the hardest verses in this comical, exaggerated, larger-than-life story of Jonah comes at the tail end of our reading today. When God saw what they, the people of Nineveh, did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind. God changed his mind. You know, in my Hebrew class last semester, we discussed this whole notion of God changing his mind. And it bothered me. It bothered me a lot. And quite honestly, it still bothers me a bit until I reflect upon the times in my own life where perhaps God changed his mind and poured out his grace upon me. Going through a divorce was a painful experience and still is at times. When I look at our two grandchildren and realize that the decisions I made and some of the hatred I displayed at the time are contained to just two people or just one generation. 
You see, some of the decisions we make as God's chosen people, some of our sinfulness, our own thoughts, our own words, our deeds are in need of an overhaul too. We, we also may need to put on the sackcloth and sit in the ashes and bask in the love of the God who changes his mind. A God whose loving kindness and mercy towards God's creation is stronger than God's judgment. A God who hears the hearts of all, of all his people when they call out. A God who has us on speed dial. Now, I can't say exactly when or if Jonah experienced the moment where an epiphany, the eureka moment where he realizes God's overarching love is not only for him and his people, but for the people of Nineveh too. And of course, all call stories are different. Yours, mine, and four fishermen who cast their lots along the Sea of Galilee one day. Little did these four fishermen know that when they set sail that morning, their lives would be dramatically changed by a call from Jesus. Little did they know that this interruption in their daily routine would be an invitation to follow Jesus. And little did the fishermen know that when they abandoned their small boat, they would experience a new life in a new community with Jesus and a new community indeed. A community that takes your hands and your exhaustion to help the weary tend to the sick and come to the aid of the oppressed. A new community that derives their identity not from their present economic condition or, or past familiar relationships, a new community where mercy, grace, love, and forgiveness, repentance, and renewal are the fundamental communal dimensions that formulate the relational kingdom of God. You know, I wish that when Jesus says, come, come after me and I will make you fishers of people, that it wouldn't require me to let go of the things I hold so tightly. Jonah was called to let go of his resentment. The four fishermen left their nets and released themselves from their families. Answering the call to discipleship is about being made new through God's redeeming love for all of creation. It's about living in a community where the relational nature of the gospel is lived out in us and through us. Answering a call from God means giving and, and receiving. 
grace. And you know, it's probably worth our while these days not to put God on call waiting. Amen. We sing, keep calling me. Christ, you stand before us all. Christ, you come and Christ, you call. Leave it all behind and join my journey. Come with me and find your life. Live my love and shine my light. Leave it all behind you. Come and follow. And you keep calling. glad that you have joined us for worship today. We have uh, several announcements before we turn to prayer. Uh, we do have some changes occurring in our community of faith as uh, we watch the COVID numbers improve and an increasing number of you are becoming vac vaccinated. And so those changes are first that we will be allowing small groups, less than 10 people to begin meeting in our building again uh, very soon. If you are a part of a group and want to meet, it would really be helpful. It would be mandatory, really, that you call our church office uh, and uh, we'll give you instructions uh, as to what you need to do when you gather with that group. We will return to in-person worship if indeed the numbers allow us to uh, at the beginning of Lent, which is, um, that's going to be February the 18th. We will have a Thursday night service at 6.30, and then a 10.30 service on Sunday, February the 21st. So that's when we plan to be back in person, and again, you're going to need to register for these services. Uh, we are not planning an 8.30 service at this point, but we can revisit that if indeed our numbers uh, require us to do so. We will be hosting a parking lot service this coming Saturday at 1 o'clock, and this is a communion service. You're welcome to come. You just need to come to the parking lot, turn your radio on, and you will hear us. If the weather is real bad, we'll cancel, and you can uh, learn about that via Facebook or uh, our, our website. I'm involved right now in planning a trip uh, for is to Israel and Palestine that I would like you to think about joining me in. And that trip uh, will be in January of 2022, a year from now. If you are interested in this trip, we talked about it uh, last year and it was supposed to be happening right now, even as we speak, 
But if you would be interested in that trip, uh, please let me know. Our blood drive coming up on February the 1st, please uh, sign up for uh, that blood drive. Paula, do you have any announcements? Well, announcements. I always have just a couple announcements. Okay. Um, don't forget to tune in this week. We have David and Goliath on our Holy Moly uh, video this week. So make sure, families, that you turn and get that information. You have your packets and get involved with your kids on those lessons. Also, you may go on YouTube or up on our website, underneath the learning and youth tab, and Kelly Peel has a really good video on Epiphany, which is the season that we are in right now. And Paula, I think you are going to be starting a, a new class coming up. I have three announcements. <laughs> Um, I am starting a, a woman's class, um, 90 days of a journaling class. We are not meeting 90 days in a row. Uh, we will be starting it in, on the 15th of February. And if you would email me or call me, I will give you the information. It will be on Mondays from 11 to 11.40. It is via Zoom as of right now. So I would love to have you uh, come. We'll meet for four weeks, and we'll see how that goes. And then you will have an opportunity to finish out the book, which you will have to order. Thank you. And now receive some greetings from some of our members. Hi, I'm Megan. I go to Spring Lake, and we were doing virtual for a while, but we just got back into doing in-person school again, so I've been going into school every day. Um, I'm Madison. I'm currently a freshman at Michigan State University. I've been doing school online, just started my second semester, and I plan on me majoring in communications and public relations. Hi, I'm Joellen, and we all miss First Lutheran very much. Um, I'm currently working at Ross Park in the early childhood special education classroom with kids uh, three to six years of age. And I see a lot of hope in them because they're very willing to wear a mask and um, don't complain about it and are even better than a lot of the adults that I know. So we miss everyone very much and hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Jeff. I work at American Seating in Grand Rapids. We've had a really hard time with COVID in the plant. Uh, lots of positive cases, lots of ill people. Uh, looks like that's finally coming to a close. Looking forward to repping some basketball and repping some soccer uh, coming up as this pandemic closes its chapter. Hello, I'm Linda Long, and um, I've been a member at First Lutheran all my life, and um, I have had wonderful quality time with my family in Alaska and in Muskegon, and I'm very blessed. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone and, um, and to have my shots. Should be pretty soon. Um, I do have a quick story. My son um, and his wife and Emerson and Daxon, they live in Alaska and Emerson goes to a preschool at a Lutheran church, Wisconsin Synod. And um, this, one of the staff members um, said to my son, there is someone here that lives in the same town you do. And come to find out, it is Ed Wise, granddaughter, Stephanie, and um, Karen Norman's niece. And their little boy attends the preschool, and he and Emerson play together every day. So that's quite a thing to think that um, there is a family right there um, from Muskegon. 
So, and I'm definitely looking forward to being back, and I want to thank Joe and Paula and everyone else that's contributed to the services. Wonderful. I didn't miss one when I was in Alaska, and also the prayer services have really, um, the evening prayers. So, thank you. Yeah, we hope everyone is well. So, we've had some technical difficulties, and this is our third attempt. <laughs> third try. <laughs> Two old people. <laughs> Carl and Lisa, you guys were awesome in your greeting a couple of weeks ago. And we don't have such entertainment here as a little one running around. But we are so happy to be able to say hi to yeah. all of our friends and really our, our church family our, uh, at First Lutheran. We, I especially so much uh, have felt very much a, a loss for these last mm -hmm. eight or nine or ten, eleven <laughs> months too long yeah uh, but sure. i know it was necessary uh for my safety and for everyone's safety and um so we are very eager to get back together yeah. and uh, uh be uh, back in our community setting looking forward to that yeah we and miss you hopeful yeah hopeful we've, we've been making the most of it and um you know i was furloughed for about eight months and started a new company. Phil was working, had to do some um, remote things, of course, as so many companies have had to do, but we camped all summer long as we always love to do. We go up to Minert Park, so we're up there every weekend. We were up there all summer through the first weekend of October. And then we took a nice little vacation, a driving vacation to Hershey, Pennsylvania, spent some time there, um, really loved that. That was a lot of fun. I, I found it very interesting. Uh, I did not know much about the Hershey Company, other than I loved its candy bars. <laughs> and we didn't eat chocolate other than you got one package of sugar-free. Right. And I think I had two little ones because we're not doing that. Oh, big thing. We both lost weight. You've lost close to 50 pounds and I've lost 35 pounds. So we got healthy. So we're feeling much better. But um, So we did Hershey and then we did Williamsburg. Um, that was really fun. Then we went up to Boyne Mountain over the new year for a long weekend with Phil's daughter and her boyfriend. Um, but, you know, the kind of things that really, um, you know, I, 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 my thing is I choose joy because there's so much we can't control with all the negativity and all the news. Um, you know, three big issues this last year that is in front of everyone um, all the time. But in spite of that, you know, we have to look for the good. And, and if we say that we're people of faith and we believe that we have to trust that God gets us through this like he has everything else. And so, you know, it's just looking for things. And so um, helping out at Curry Kitchen with the free meals was a wonderful thing that that to me was seeing God at work, you know, um, Jesus with skin on. Um, last Sunday when we did the car parade um, with Barb and Gordon at their house for Gordon's 88th birthday, um, that was wonderful because we had such a great turnout for that. And you the, really enjoyed earlier, that too. Yeah, earlier, that also besides the one for Gordon, uh, in the summer there were almost like three weeks where there was several of those each week. I did. As, I think I did six of those six to homes. nursing homes, and that was really. And, and you know, the first time I went with a friend to the one in North Muskegon, I just went to be part of it, and and I thought. I could do this, you know, just making some calls, putting it on Facebook. But I just cried because when you saw the smiles on people's faces, you know, they were so happy to see us. And they're sitting outside social distancing in their wheelchairs saying, we miss you. We love you. And sometimes they were in their windows waving at us. But I thought, you know, we can all do something. And, you know, it's the little things that are really the big things. So, you know, that's made me happy just, you know, and kept me positive because I, I'm just, I choose to be a half full glass instead of half empty. Right. Uh, anything else choose, you want to Choose share? joy. Find joy. Uh, oh. It'll overtake us. And one thing I'll show you, because I know some people know I've been painting rocks. That was something I didn't know I'd love and I fell in love with. But um, this is my latest thing. I haven't done a lot lately with it because I've been so busy with my new company. But I thought this was so cute. So they're having a little campfire. So I'll just share that with you. 
So anyway, we miss you all. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you soon. We're excited that the beginning of Lent, we're going to have in-person worship again. We don't know exactly how that's going to be, but um, we're really excited to be there. And I know Phil's missed singing a lot, and he's been able to do that a little bit more lately. So we hope to see you all really soon. We yes. miss you. We love you. Um, take care. Stay safe and reach out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of new life and new possibility, we are grateful for the peaceful transition in presidential power this past week. We continue to pray for peace in our streets and in our capitals. We pray that those who plan violence will be haunted by your call to live out love and reconciliation. Bless Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and their administration that justice may reign in our land and that the whole of creation may give, be given rest from the horror that we have imposed upon it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. God of all, we commend to your care Donald and Melania Trump. May you journey with them as their lives journey to a new land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. O God, whose grace brings about a change in your mind, move among us so that we might pray and work for our enemies. Forgive us for the grudges that we hold, for the reconciliation that we do not seek, and for the grace we do not share. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of both the living and the dead, we now take a moment to remember before you the 400,000 people from our nation who have died from the COVID virus. Turn your hearts toward their families and toward those for whom the virus remains a present reality. Tend to Sue Monroe and John Rodriguez who continue to recover from this awful plague. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O God, whose will it is that we might be whole, comfort those who hurt, relieve those who worry, Restore those who are sick. Watch over especially Gene Sedini, Wally Talent, Ken Coyman, Tom Schlaffer, Pastor Sean Eubanks, Michelle Corey, and Tom Kladzik. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God, whose final word is yes, we give you thanks for those who have gone before us, particularly Donna Daunt, Carlene Ketchum, Pastor Arndt Broughton, a missionary to Madagascar. Receive them into the arms of your mercy and support and strengthen those who mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your mercy through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, and also with, with you. you. We share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord be with you. And also, and with, also you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our delight, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, 
with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the and power, power, and, and the, the glory, glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final song, Bring Forth the Kingdom.
kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. Now may the Lord who calls you also bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Stay in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.